thank you for being here. Uh, now, in, in, a, in a conference on, uh, on evolutionary pattern, well, what, what I'm talking about is a very narrow possibility topic, which is a pattern, simply a, a pattern which uh, we claim, and we will show data supporting our claims, that uh, can condition the, the way uh, culture information and spreads among individuals. Now, uh, motivation. Uh, we, we live in a world of connections. This is, okay, this is hype now, but it's true since, since the, the origin of, of the human uh, societies. Uh, this world of connections builds up most of our information, and your cultures, and which depend on the type of people we, we meet. And, uh, and in particular now we meet also through uh, medias, let's say in an extended sense. Uh, this is true for po possibly everything populated in our brain, possibly, I will not uh, dig in the, in the debate. Uh, but in particular it's true for opinions. And when we talk about opinions, and in general about say informational flows in societies, not all network members are equal, and I will be more precise about that now. So basically, if we take any kind of society, uh, we, we, will, we can model it as some, well, we can, we network economists try to model it as, uh, as a network which some, uh, with some connections, but all, not all. So you have the trivial network in which everybody is talking to everybody, but we, you can have some other uh, shapes, okay? And in particular, you, you can ask about a single node, which is an agent, an individual, uh, what's his position inside the network? So uh, he may be connected with few or many agents, uh, and he may be, uh, be listened to few agents or more agents and talk to more agents or few agents. Now, usually if you have a friend, both of, the, of you talk to each other, but for instance, if you th think about medias, uh, mass medias are exactly, uh, at least there is one guy talking to all those people, but not necessarily listening to a lot of people. So uh, the question is, uh, what does, what's the influence of this on the flow of information? And there are several applications, uh, not our, directly of our work, but of the field uh, which is trying to uh, to understand exactly what's the influence of the network position uh, on social influence. Uh, I will just mention two of, given the context, two of, uh, of the last topic, diffusion of technologies. There have been s interesting studies on diffusion of uh, agricultural uh, uh, methods in rural areas, and nice data sets showing that indeed if you, if you focus on people which have particular connections to the local village, and publicize with them your new technology, it's easier for them to spread out. Okay, so uh, as I already mentioned, our main research question concerns in degree and out degree. So I will call out degree the number of people you talk to uh, on some temporal basis, for instance, and in degree the number of people talking to you. And the questions are quite trivial. What is the role of out degree for, for your social influence and what's the role of in degree? Uh, well, uh, there is best literature, uh, theoretical, and not only on this topic. I have to skip a bit, but let's say this point one just means people are fully rational. They are as smart as possible. So given enough information, they are able to, to get to the best possible estimate on some state of the nature, okay? Thanks to the connection with other individuals in the society. And then there are uh, works instead trying to find simple rules to account for different sources of information. Uh, and in particular, they are really simple. By, by that, I mean that the most used rule and most used both in theoretical extensions and in empirical applications is the following. I listen to some people. I just don't care what's the network behind them. I just average out in some way which may depend on the information, okay? And there is, for instance, some is this is a model in which you have your opinion at the beginning of time and then you compare it with other, people, other people's opinion. Uh, there are models in which you, you keep on receiving information, but the idea is pretty the same. You just average out, you don't know there is a network behind. Now, it's simpler, but there's a cost. Assuming that I'm talking to 100 people and he's talking to one, pe one person, uh, even if his opinion is good as, as good as mine, the average of our opinions will converge to, my, to something more similar to my opinion. And that's bad, because we want to converge to the best possible opinion 
aggregating all, av all available information. Now, what does this literature predict? Well, take a note and assume that the R degree increases. So you, you, meet, you, you, you observe people which all the sequel have uh, talked to more and more people, okay? Now, the basic Bayesian or rational model is no problem. They will account in some way and they will still get to the best possible estimate on, on the real world. Well, the DeMarza model says, okay, you talk to more people, you have a higher social influence. Now, those are just pictures, but I'll, I will be clearer then uh, later on what we mean by social influence. And there are studies showing that this, yes, this is what happens. You put people in the lab, somebody talks to more people than the others, his opinion will, will be more influent. So this is intuitive. But what about in degree? So if you listen to more people, what's going to happen? Well, again, rational model, no problem. We just uh, take into account everything which has to be taken into account in some not very clear way, but uh, everybody has the same influence. Now, if you take literally the model by the map, so the influence is decreasing, and that's quite simple, in fact. I listen to a lot of people. I will give a lower weight to my initial opinion. So I will be, let's say, publicizing other people's opinion at the cost of uh, undervaluing mine, okay? And there is no clear experimental evidence. So uh, our real research question is, does, uh, is to find if reality is as De Marzo predicts. Now, De Marzo is not talking about it in degree, but if you take literally the model, that's what happens. Now, this is the, the rule of thumb of De Marzo. Assume that opinions are numbers, you just take the average. N is uh, your, the set of your neighbors, so I, I listen to 10 people, they give me their opinions, I take the, the average, okay? Uh, so, okay, I don't need to, to know anything about networks to, to do this operation. I just need to talk with some people and evaluate in this way. Uh, and as I said, uh, the, uh, the Marx and others call persuasion bias exactly this effect, that uh, I talk to many people and they don't take into account that they are listening too much to me, okay? So influence increases with O degree. Now, uh, Corazzini and others in 2012 proposed this extension. Basically, D is your in degree. So it's the number of people you, you listen to. And they say, yeah, it's an average, but it's a weighted average in which I will give a higher weight to people listening to more people. So this should take into account the, the structure of the network and making information aggregation a bit better. Uh, if you take row equal to zero, you have that this is one, this is one, and we have just the maths, okay? Uh, now, there is an assumption which is not just uh, quantitative, if it's qualitative. People know there is a network, realize there is something they must take care about, of. And they call the consequence influential listeners. So uh, if I talk, I, I'm listening to someone who's listened to many people, I will uh, give a higher weight to its influence. Uh, so our goal was to design a test to find out how is the real world behaving. And here we come to experimental design. There are, we, we did this in a lab. There are four people at a time which are connected through a network structure which I will show you. Uh, they get a number in the beginning. And then they are the, there are eight rounds. In each round, they are able to communicate, but only in, some, in the given network structure. So they cannot talk and listen to everybody. And we ask them at each time to try to guess the average of the numbers. And, and they have to do this because then we will uh, pay them according to the guess of a random uh, round. So in every round, their goal is to do the best possible to get to, to grasp this average. And yes, in each round, uh, so assume I listen to him, uh, in round one I see his opinion of round zero and so on. And we watch at the evolution of beliefs. This is the, the network we use. Uh, it's a strongly connected network. Mm, uh, I don't want to get into the details now, but let's say it's a network which uh, allows the formation of unbiased opinions if people are perfectly rational. Now look at B and D. They talk to the same people, uh, but B listens to A, D doesn't. So uh, let's say this is a, a word in which De Marzo would predict B and D are exactly the same as social influence. If they are not, De Marzo is not explaining everything. Uh, so the main hypothesis is B is more influent than D, and we'll see if 
it's what happens. Now, you may see whatever we found, we, whatever we find, it's not a problem of influence, it's just a problem of the letter B being the top right, nicer to people. So just as a technicality, we rotate the network. It's the same, but anything we find is not just a position or a label bias. Now, uh, the final uh, average of opinions is in our model uh, a way, uh, an average of the initial opinions with some weights which we want to, to measure. And that's exactly uh, how we'll proceed. Uh, again, if you take a rational word, all the weights are the same, the influence, the influence is the same for everybody. If you take the pure de marzo words, you have that B and D have the highest influence. Why? Because they talk to, to a lot of people, basically. They talk both to two people, while C and they talk to one people. Then you may wonder why A is more influent than C. Well, simply because A is talking to B, which is influent, while C is talking to A, who is not. So that's quite simple. What happens if you put rho equal to 1? So people are weighted according to their in degree. Well, D is still quite influent, but B is much more. Why? Because B is listened to A. So we have two clear tests. First, uh, in the Bayesian model, you have that B, A, and C have the same weight, while in the persuasion bias model, you have B is more important than A, which is more important than C. And most importantly, for our purpose, uh, the influential listener word is a word in which B is more important than D. Uh, let's go to the results. Uh, those are the, the weights we measure. And you see that B is clearly the most important. And now, now get in, let's get into the details of what we are measuring. Is there persuasion bias? Well, there is, uh, apparently, but there's, that's not really conclusive evidence. Uh, we, we found that some of our predictions are satisfied, but A is still too much important for what we expected. But it must be said that our network is not designed or proposed for me measuring persuasion bias. We see some evidence, but we have no conclusive answer. But instead, our network performs great for in-degree effect, because it's B and D are perfectly symmetric, except for in-degree. And what we do find is that there is evidence, statistical evidence, of B weighting more than D. Uh, we are clustering on independent observations and we try to take into account any, any possible problem. Now, there could be two explanations looking at the nodes. C could say, okay, look at B, look, B is listening at A, I will trust B more than D. Or it could be that D looks at B and trusts B more than B trusts D, okay? And we can test for that. We can, do, we can look at what is shaping the opinion of C. And indeed we find that the opinion of B matters much more than the opinion of D. It's significant. Uh, it's hard to design a, a similar test for the, for the other case, uh, simply because they have different sets of, of, of people they listen to, so it's not trivial how to design it. We can look at the coefficients, okay? We can see that this is different from this, and in fact it goes against our, our, our hypothesis. But it's not trivial to compare those numbers because they are intrinsically different. What we can say is that, yes, C behaves as we, as we expect. Uh, I will skip that unless you're interested. Uh, so, we can give a, a look at the qualitative shape of evolution of beliefs over time. So here we are taking the beliefs at each round, we, there are eight rounds, uh, regressed on the initial beliefs. So as you expect, in the beginning, there is not much differentiation. This is what you observe. This is what De Marzo would predict. You don't see B because it's behind D. They are identical in any possible sense. And this is what the model of influential listeners uh, taken at the extreme case, pro equal to one predicts. I won't claim it's exactly the same, but I do claim it's much more similar, in particular, as we saw for, for the position of B compared to D. Uh, okay, so maybe I'm a bit, even a bit late, early. Uh, so, what's, what's the conclusion? It's not just that some positions are different than others. It's really that 
uh, when people uh, know something about the social network in which they are interacting, they do think, take this into account, and they, and, which is what I say here, and they do it even too much so. So we have a model of rationality and a model, let's say, let's call it of stupidity, which give different predictions. And people are even on the left of the model of rationality. So there is some sort of authority, a feeling, or something like that, which makes me give even too much attention to people who are known to, to listen, to, to have some authority in the field, let's say. And thank you.